We're live. Hey, welcome to the show, everybody. So I'm going to give it a couple of minutes for people to jump on because I've uh, started a little bit early. Uh, so when you jump on, tell me that you can hear me or not. Say, I can hear you. I can hear you. And tell me what part of the world you are coming in from. So you might say, I'm Steph from Montreal. I'm uh, Natasha from Nebraska, etc., etc., etc. That's it. So in this video, I'm going to, uh, as the title says, we're going to see what Google is saying about Python. Something interesting I came across. And uh, we'll take it from there. If you like the subject of the video, give me a thumbs up. If you hate my videos, give me two thumbs down. And uh, yeah. Hi from Yemen. Hey, cool, man. All right. Very good. Well, welcome to the show or welcome to the stream. I don't know if it's really a show, but from Bonka, Texas. Shalom from Israel. Very cool. I can hear you from the Palestine. Fantastic. Chicago. Norway. All right. The party's just beginning. I can hear you. Samu from Hungary. Hey, very cool. From Colombia. All right. So Marco from What's Up? Maud from Morocco. Malaysia, hey, 4 a.m. here. Wow, you're up late, buddy. Ethiopia, London, UK, Alberta. Hey, fellow Canuck. Uh, Lithuania, wow. Turkey, there we go. Tennessee, Bulgaria, Toronto, good vibes. Skyser from Good Vibes, Florida. All right, we're good, good. Holly from Milwaukee, all right. I thank you, Afik, I appreciate it. Except following your advice, following your advice from the last two videos and got offers. Thank you. Hey, congratulations. Cheers to that. Uh, uh, goddamn pitch quality is amazing. It's goddamn amazing, I tell you. Um, all right, so uh, Bosnia, wow. Austria, I think this is Germany. Not sure. Netherlands, Texas. All right, so we're loading up here with people. We've got 67 people. If you're watching the replay, uh, as usual, I'll put a time index to get to the subject at hand. If this, it's not my intention, but if this stream goes on longer, I'm going to start doing Steph clips because uh, these 50-minute streams are quite long. I think people will like that. They've been asking, LA, there we go. Cool, cool. Indonesia. So all over the world, in fact, very... The world is very well represented, which is good. All right, so 67, 61 persons, 62, Austin, Texas, Java, Indonesia. Hello from godforsaken place you don't want to know about. <laughs> Georgia, I hear you. All right, so um, let's just jump into it. I'll, I was browsing the Googles. And I came across this stuff here. There we go. I just wanted to see what's going on in Google. And you notice how Google's got this little box that appears here. And we're going to read some of these things off and see what Google has to say. So, is Python losing popularity? We click through. All right. So, it goes, the main disadvantages of Python is it are its slowness, its weakness in mobile application development, and its, and its less popularity in the enterprise development sector. Additionally, with the advent of AI and ML, nowadays enterprises are swiftly moving towards AI and ML based web applications to better serve their customers. So, my answer is it's gaining in popularity. It's the probably it's either number one, number two most popular language in the world today. Is Python still relevant in 2020? These are not my questions. These are Google. We'll see what Google says. Now, major programming languages such, such as Python, Java, C Sharp, Node, well, Node is not a language, JS, uh, that's a language, support it. Due to the rapid expansion of the ecosystem, this makes it one of the most unique technologies to continue to be relevant for the foreseeable future. So that's pretty accurate there. What's well, this top seven programming languages and frameworks in 2020? Will there be a Python 4? At the current rate, the language, excuse me, at the current rate, rate, rate of language features releases roughly once every 18 months. That means we would likely see Python 4 for, for some time in 2023 rather than Python 3.10. So apparently with Python 4, 
it's not a huge upgrade. When you went from two to three, it was a, you, your code could break, did break in certain circumstances. But from three to four, it's just going to be incremental. It's kind of like, it could be kind of like HTML5. Like they haven't released a new version of HTML5. There's no HTML6 on the horizon. Uh, and HTML5, I think it became, it took over about 2012. It was out before that, I believe, but it pretty much took over then. Um, there is not going to be an HTML6. They're just beefing up HTML5. So, all right, let's go back here. Uh, will Python 2 ever end? See, Python 2 is, uh, was deprecated a long time ago. Python 2 is no longer supported by the Python Software Foundation. Here's what you can do if you're stuck in Python 2 in what is fast becoming a Python 3 world. As of January 1st, 2020, ooh, that's last year, the 2x branch of Python programming language is no longer supported by its creators, the Python Software Foundation. Yeah, so you shouldn't be doing Python 2, although if, if you were to learn uh, from an ancient Python 2 course, uh, for you to move into Python 3 would be like, like this. I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Uh, yeah. What's going on? Here, another one. This weird Google, eh? Google's questions here, right? Eh? Is Python a dying language? No. Originally, as Python, is Python, excuse me, is Python a dying language? No, it is not dying. It's not even close to dying. Is Python enough to get a job? Python might be enough to get a job, but most jobs require a set of skills. True. For example, you might get a job to write Python code that connects to a MySQL database, to build a web application, you need to know JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. If you want to get into machine learning, you will need to know about mathematical modeling. So yeah, so Python, you could do standalone Python jobs. Like a, a friend of mine, he was working for an animation house and they had all these render farms, basically a bunch of server computers that are just processing video. And they controlled everything via Python scripts. So he had full-time Python programmers working for him when he could find them, because they were hard to find. Um, they're paid very well. And they would just write Python scripts. They, wouldn't, they weren't writing Python applications per se, but they were just writing Python code to manage the uh, server farm. So you see that as well, where Python is used in a lot of back-end processes, not necessarily app building. All right, let's jump back in. See what else they got. Uh, is Python the future? Over the span of 25 years, Python has managed to reach the level that is high above other, others, making it the fastest growing language. When was this written? April 2013. April 13, 2020, excuse me. Right here. Oop. Not only this, but it also has a promising future along with the additional other technology. There's no doubt that it has become quite favorite in the software industry. So Python is 25 years old. And it's, uh, it's even number one, number two. Uh, what will replace Python? F featured. Python is now one of the most popular programming languages among developers and could soon overtake C++. It did. This is a 2018 article, so it, sh it sh surely did. Uh, but a much younger language, Julia, a possible alternative Python, which never went anywhere, which did not go anywhere as far as I know, is catching on quickly, but it didn't actually catch on. All right, next, is Java really dying? Again, this is Google. I'm not picking these questions, Google is. You're right, there's no evidence that Java is dying. Another ancient technology and language that is still dominant. But no language is best at everything. Go is widely recognized as a good backend language for servers. It's simple and powerful, but its ecosystem is limited. This is 2018 again. Java is still right up there. It's not number one, but it's, it's even it's in the top three most popular languages at all times. How are we doing here? Let's go. Uh, can Python replace Java? Python continues its rise on the list of popular programming languages in the world, according to the Tiobe. Excuse me, according to Tiobe analysts. With this rate, Python can overtake C and Java and become the most popular language. This is uh, last year. A year, two years almost, a year and a half ago. It took over, it took them as far as I understand. What is Python not good for? Not suitable for mobile and game development. Although I've heard that they, I think SimCity was done with Python, but I'm not sure about that. 
Python is mostly used in desktop and web server development. It is not considered ideal for mobile app development and game development due to the consumption of more memory and a slow processing speed while compared to other programming languages. Yeah, I would generally agree, but I'm sure there are exceptions. It's uh, is Python 3.9 released? Python 3.9 was released October 5th. There you go. So if we go there, let's see what we got here. Oh, we're at 3.91 February last, no, oh, date February this year. So 0.1 is coming out in, uh, well, came out. Date, enter. Wow, it just came out today. What a fluke. There you go. Timely uh, articles. This article explains the new features of Python 3.9 compared to 3.8. 3.9 was released on October 5th, 2020. So this is 9.1. Um, so let's see. Summary, summary of release highlights. Uh, union operator added to DIC. That's D-I-C-T. Uh, type hinting <laughs> generics in standard collections. Relaxed grammar restrictions and decorator. Okay. So some uh, stuff on the periphery, just looking over quickly. All right, we'll get back to our main piece, but uh, yeah, well, there you go, 3.91 is released. By the way, if you're on a 3X branch, three, if you're, you know, if you find a course that's 3.1, 3.2, 3.7, 3.6, 3.8, you're, you're fine, right? Um, when you got the subversions like that, the points, the differences are not very big for most people, okay? Uh, and, and for most language, for most aspects of the language. Uh, what is just the best version of Python? For sake of compatibility with third-party modules, it's always safest to choose a Python version that is a one major point version behind the current one. At the time of writing Python 3.8, one is the most current version. The best safe bet then is to use the latest update 3.7. There you go, that's March uh, 2020, it's not too long ago. Uh, okay, let's go on. These are getting boring. Um, oh, here's a good question. Python Is Python 3 backward compatible with Python 2? Python 3 implements a lot of very useful features and breaks backward compatibil compatibility. It does it on purpose so the great features can be implemented even despite the fact that Python 2... Uh, so basically, Python 3 is not backward compatible compatible, although there are uh, programs that you can run your Python through code f through to make it Python 3. It's not perfect, but it, it does work to a certain extent. Uh, what's going on? Is Python better than SQL? It's kind of weird because they're two different language categories. SQL is designed for databases. Python is a general purpose programming language, so that's kind of a weird question. Is Python better than Ruby? We all know the answer to that. Oh, come on. Can I get a job with just Python? We saw that before. Can I learn Python in a month? Apparently, yes, you can. Yes, you can. I can tell you from my course, many people learn Python within a month or sooner. Uh, first and foremost, requirement to learn Python within a month or not is knowledge of coding and a little bit pro efficiency in other languages like C, C++, C Sharp, Java. If you have a workable knowledge of any of these languages, you can learn Python a month. Well, you can learn Python in a month if you have a very good course. Shameless self-promotion there. Can I get a job with Python certification? Becoming a Python developer is the most direct job out there for someone who knows Python programming language. That's a weird sentence. A Python developer can be expected to build websites, optimize data algorithms. No, not really. I know. It depends on the type of job. Why Python is not future. It is the future. What are the disadvantages of Python? We know it's very slow. Uh, why is Python slow? Python is slower than C because it is an interpreted, lang interpreted language. This is also true. Uh, this amplifies a number of actual CPU, CPU instructions required in order to perform a given statement. The difference is that Python code can be interpreted instead of directly by the CPU. Will be, excuse me, the difference is that Python code will be interpreted instead of directly by the CPU. So what does that all mean? Because Python takes care of a lot of stuff for you automatically, well, let me just zoom in on stuff. Because Python takes care of most stuff for you automatically, um, you do not have to, as a programmer, manage all these things that you would have to if you were writing the code in, in uh, C++ or something, uh, or C. Um, 
So what happens is the code's a little less efficient because Python, when you write a little bit of Python code, like, I don't know, you create a variable, you run a function, it's doing all kinds of extra stuff that uh, behind the scenes, a lot of checks and so on, I guess. And so just a lot more code is, is running in the end. Whereas if you write very clean C code or C++ code, you got less code running, um, less things are happening, if you will. This is a very, very basic explanation. Uh, so that's why it just runs faster. All right, let's go on. All right, uh, okay, we did that one. Is C++ a dying language? No. Why is popular C, Why is Python so popular? First and foremost, reason why Python is much popular, because it is highly productive as compared to other programming languages like C++ and Java. That means you'd have to write a lot less Python code to get something to work. It runs slower, but you, it doesn't take, uh, it, it's much shorter to write. Python is also very famous for its simple programming syntax, code readability, and English-like commands that make coding Python a lot easier and efficient. Yeah, so that's, but I can't argue with that. Uh, which is better, Python or Julia? I don't know. Um, I, okay, we'll see, we'll see what they have to say. Julia is faster than Python because it is designed to quickly implement the math concepts like linear algebra and matrix representations for codes that are equally big and complex written in both languages. Julia takes lesser time at speeds uh, of the same order of magnitude of C and Fortran. Oh, that's pretty fast. Um, yeah, Julia is a very specialized language though. So, you know, uh, what else is there? All right, so uh, any more? We'll see what else. Py can Kotlin replace Python? In some fields, Kotlin has already surpassed Python. Still, there, in, there is one field where Kotlin won't compare for now. It is in, 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 interoperability. Uh, I, I messed that one up. Kotlin has a superb platform of interoperability, Java, JVM, JS browser, but it's not quite easy to call C++ code. All right. Oh yeah, it's enough. It was interesting to see what um, uh, what the uh, Google had to say about Python here. So that's kind of cool. I thought it would be something to look at. Uh, all right, how we do? 153. So um, before I forget, um, yes, let's go here. If you want to sign up to my nerd, Need to Nerd newsletter, it's free. I'm just uh, trying to get a direct connection with the audience. Uh, you'll get exclusive content stuff. Don't worry, I won't spam you. I hardly spam people, that's for sure. Um, yeah, so there we go. Uh, if you want to get in shape, uh, my friend's got this body developer thing. Again, it's free. He does free consultations, no obligation or anything. He's, he doesn't, doesn't have a product. He's just working on his program. So I just thought I'd mention that. So you want to check that out, the uh, thebodydeveloper.com. And if you want to keep direct contact with me, need to nerd dot com the newsletter all the links are below all right so we're going to do uh, some uh, q and a and then uh, we'll take it um, okay i did some research on degrees called game design program and most people said it's not worth the taking yeah no game design no dart over tight script okay let's see uh Steph, advise me, I have no future plans. Well, you gotta fall in love with a process. So what I would do, I would say, spend 20 minutes a day learning something new, whether it be Python or PHP or whatever. And then from there, you can continue and decide, figure out what you're gonna do. Because uh, if you don't have plans, that means you're just, you're just unaware of options that are out there. So you wanna make yourself aware of options by just exploring different things. Exploring something and deciding not to do it is not a waste of time. You're basically, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? By doing that, you're basically eliminating uh, variables and possibilities, which is good. Let's see what Marco has to say about C++. For a beginner that no intermediate C, who knows, let me try that again. For a beginner that no intermediate of C++, but is also a lot about learning Python and decided to use Python, said, I want to know which type of task is best to be specialized as a freelancer? Uh, between the two would be Python. Uh, I want almost 100% sure turn on that, but you have to have the web in there. Um, but I would look at, uh, for freelancing, I would look at uh, Webstack with Node 
JavaScript or WebStack with PHP, Laravel, WordPress. If, if um, freelancing is what you want to do, would you recommend TypeScript over Dart? I personally think TypeScript is going to be the most remarkable language 2020. Well, just look at the jobs. Just go to indeed.com, check out the jobs, see what happens. Um, Ruben has to say, oh, he's saying to Ruben, I think you should check out C++, C Sharp, and Unity. Depends on what kind of game you would like to build. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Steph, I will be driving buses. Is there a future in that? <laughs> I would imagine so. I would imagine so. Um, kids got to get to school, you know. If you like driving buses, I imagine if you work for the government or school board, it's probably a low-stress uh, type of job, you know? I don't know. That's cool for you, you know. Uh, the Python interpreter language breakdown for speed and why it is so slow is spot on. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I'm doing the Odin project. I'm going to skip the Ruby part of it. <laughs> Steph, what are your top three uh, favorite libraries in Python? Hmm. You mean modules? Um, I don't know. It depends on what you're doing, you know? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't have a favorite. It depends on what you're doing. Uh, yeah. Uh, Python difficulty ranked between one and five. One being the most difficult, five being the least difficult. I put it down to five. I'd say it's, it's the most approachable language. Uh, any COBOL programs? I hear they make a bunch. They do indeed, because nobody wants to program COBOL. So you probably make a lot of money there. I use Python for everything. Generate images, cut videos, scrape data. It's the duct tape language. Exactly. That's its power. Its power is its flexibility. Uh, there you go. Um, just search. Okay, it's, there's a conversation going on. I won't get in there. Uh, I would not compare C++ with Python. It is totally different game in terms of runtime and spreading sp writing speed, depending on the use case. Yeah, pretty much. They're, they don't... Uh, it's like comparing um, a Jeep with a sports car, you know? They have different purposes. Uh, one is not better than the other. It just depends on what you got to do. Let's see what Ref Rafik has to say. I've studied a few languages, C, C++, C Sharp, Java, and got little deep into Oracle. Python is so powerful, especially if you're doing something related to AI and ML. Yeah, pretty much. It's got a lot of uh, backing there. Uh, the more languages die, the more you get paid. Yeah, there's some truth to that, exactly, you know, because of rarity. Rarity of coders. PHP and Java are the nickel back of languages. No one likes them, but they are everywhere, for, so someone has to be using them. Um, I don't know. I think PHP coders tend to like PHP. Java people, I couldn't be, you know, like I talk to Java people, they may like it. You know, those are two languages I've used quite a bit. Uh, but isn't Python like super slow? It is super slow. It is pretty slow. But doesn't matter because uh, computers are so fast. Speed of write time is always more important as speed of runtime these days. So translate that. Languages that are easier to write to get something done, faster to write to get something done, uh, most of the time beat out languages uh, that are the opposite. So uh, depending on what you're doing. Uh, what's the most popular language for IoT? You know, I don't know what that would be, but I think it might be C, in all honesty. Uh, hello, my, hello, man. In my company, I'm using Python script to scrape the data backend. So there you go. Uh, there you go. What's your opinion on Python being used in game development? Uh, you know... I have never used Python for game development, and so I, I heard that Python can be is used in game development. In my Python course, I teach you how to build a simple game, but it's a text-based game. I, I think it could probably be used for uh, strategy games and games that don't require a lot of processing. Why not? I'm not sure. Now the problem is when you're developing a game, like anything, you got to look at the platform in which is you know how many. If you write a game in Python, like, 
where is it going to be run, right? I don't know how well Python would run on mobile phones because I assume that's where a lot of people will be playing those type of games. But again, it's not my uh, field of expertise. Um, greeting from Romania, nerds. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sh perhaps that could be the case. Uh, I thought Python was supposed to be fast. No, 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 no. Hello from Finland. Damn cold here. Yeah, I know how you feel. Uh, uh, v streams. V streams are amazing. Please don't quit. Uh, I'll try not to. Um, all right. So I think I got most of the questions. Anything else? Uh, uh, What's your advice for newbie in Python libraries? Where to use it? Well, you let the job dictate that for you. You know what I mean? It's like um, you, you, you do your Python courses, you write a few little Python programs, uh, you know, maybe try to do some web scraping with Python, do some file manipulation, some I.O., that kind of stuff. And then uh, look for look for jobs, look for jobs, and then you'll learn what you need to learn for a particular job. You may find yourself using rare, unused, barely used modules in Python, or you may find yourself using very popular modules. I don't know. Is PHP a good choice for mobile development? Thanks. PHP uh, is good for server side web development. So on the front end, you'd have a web, you know, HTML, CSS, JavaScript front end. You could use PHP for the back end. PHP's strength is that it's very specialized in web development. That's all it does. It doesn't do anything else. You could use PHP to do other things, which would be silly too. But when it comes to the web, it's easiest to onboard is, is PHP. Uh, Steph, what do you think newbies go goes to trend language versus old ones of Java, PHP, and so on? They don't like the hard way. Well, um, the, the newbies tend to go for the trending languages because there's this uh, idea that um, you have to know the latest or you're, you're screwed in software development. You have to know only the newest languages and so on. Uh, if you actually look at the actual job availabilities and so forth, you can see that it's a lot of the old languages like Python, like JavaScript, like Java, like C Sharp, uh, SQL, uh, PHP, these are all 20, 25, 30-year-old languages. C, C++, 30, 40-year-olds, I don't know, 45-year-old languages. These are all of the languages that are in demand. The new languages, there's some, some job opportunities, but not really compared to the old ones. And that's because, as I've been teaching for a long time, is that the rate of change in programming languages has really diminished quite a bit. Back in the early 90s, things used to change pretty quickly over a year or two. Two or three years is like a totally different game. I remember back in, it was like 2002, um, the web had gone through this, the whole web standards evolution or revolution, if you will. And they basically, it transformed the way web uh, sites were built uh, in terms of the front end, right? Using CSS and so forth, as opposed to the old way HTML tables. And... It was a huge change. It was a huge change. I remember a friend of mine had stopped doing web stuff in 98, took a few years off, came back to it in 2002, and he was like, wow, it's so different. It's like a totally different thing. And it was a totally different thing. And I think and you had that kind of uh, big shift in the technology trends over you know, several years. It would happen every so often. But this has stopped largely. Uh, since, I'd say, around... 2012, 2014 maybe, things have really flattened off in terms of the rate of change. Instead of the coding uh, and the programming languages and the stacks changing, what changed was more about uh, server uh, deployments, uh, DevOps perhaps, DevOps server deployment, that changed quite a bit. And now we're seeing with the server uh, configs and, and setup and so forth, that's becoming highly simplified as well. Um, so that's kind of plateauing as well. So that's why, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, the way fit people were building apps five years ago, they're still pretty much building them, building them the same way today. Um, you know, hasn't changed. So yeah, that's why. So there, you know, there's this notion amongst young developers that 
we're still in this phase in the software development world where things are changing so quickly, but it's just not the case anymore. It's not changing so quickly anymore. Um, so I wouldn't be so concerned about that. Um, so it, it's not so much that the older languages are harder because everybody in real world is using the older languages. You know, it, it's just that it's just that stigma, that thinking that we're still 1999, we're still 2002, 2005, where the rate of change is still fast. It's not anymore. It's that's done. It's over, and that's normal actually for any industry. Uh, if you go back, uh, look at some old videos when I was a kid in the 1900s, where you have uh, uh, you can find photos and maybe some videos, probably more photos of of cars, automobiles, and, and they had cars, all these weird designs, right, with, with three wheels and giant steering wheels and all these weird designs. And over time, they refined the, the, the methodologies and in, in the way that you build a car. So if you look at all the cars out today, they're all pretty much the same. You know, the, the steering wheel and the brakes and this and lights, it's all pretty much the same. Just It's more about aesthetic and some nuance. The only, the major change that we're starting now after like whatever, 100 years, is we're going from combustion engine to electric vehicle, electric. Um, that's 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 in you know that's the only change in terms of automobiles and you know, forever. So you're seeing that in software. So that's why people are like that. Long explanation, but uh, that's the truth. Uh, what is the difference? What is the difference in technical skills interviews between junior and senior developers? Depends on the company. Depends on the company. You you have to look up the company that. Uh, you're uh, dealing with and see well, let me give myself some color there there we go Oof, i was looking pretty pale uh, you got to look at the company in ha at hand and see what it is that uh, they're looking for every company is different things are stabilizing now the things that are changing are the frameworks and not the languages themselves yeah i would say that that being said the tried and true frameworks are still very very you know express Django, Laravel, Bootstrap, not Bootstrap, um, Java Spring, there we go. Uh, you know, those are pretty stable as well. But yeah, you're right. Generally speaking, like, like for instance, JavaScript frameworks, it's, it's, it's React, Vue, and Angular. React, Vue, Angular. It's been, that's been pretty stable for a while, years now. Should I use Vue, Angular, or React to build projects? Depends on the job. Like if you are an independent contractor, I would lean towards Vue. Although I heard React, the new React has uh, made some big upgrades. I don't know. Uh, Angular is something I think more for the enterprise, but uh, I'll leave that for you to explore. Uh, yeah, what else do we got here? How are we doing for time? 30 minutes. Okay, I'm going to be wrapping this up. Uh, I was told this Django support is a Django support. <laughs> I'm having trouble with the Django. How are you? Go back to Laravel. It's safe there. What is the difference in technical skills? Okay, we had this one. Uh, it, if you understand vanilla JS, is it easier to learn any framework? Of course, of course, of course, of course, of course. Yes, yes, you have to learn your vanilla first, then you go to a framework. If you don't know the language, you're not gonna be able to learn the framework. You're gonna get hit the wall very quickly because you, you're writing, you know, whether you are using Vue or React or Angular, or any JavaScript framework, you are writing a lot of JavaScript code. So you better understand your JavaScript. So you have to start with the basics. You have to start with the basics, you know? All right, we'll see what Horias has to say. Stefan, I love the way you argument things. Your experience speaks for itself. What type of apps you see are in demand in the future? Web, okay, in terms of CRM, Salesforce, EBS, marketing, social media, opinion. Hmm. That's a good one. I think um, apps are able to automate uh, business processes, like uh, you know, figure out training, training people, uh, putting resources together. Um, I know it's very vague. Uh, there's still a lot of room in that. There's still a lot of room in that. I, I, I don't want to reveal it. Like, my friend of mine has a company. It's AI-based, and he's doing gangbusters. 
because he, with his AI, he's able to, without revealing, he's able to automate uh, very common business processes with his AI. And it's, uh, he's doing fantastically well with that. So that's uh, something, but there's all, that's a broad question, dude. That's a good question. All right, let's see what to Chad Williams has to say. Listening to this live stream as I'm working on my web dev job. Very cool. No college and self-taught. Thanks to Studio Web, 2018 Studio Web grab. Hey, congratulations. See? Studio Web grads, they beat out the guys with computer science degrees. We knock them out pretty easily. Yeah, it's true, actually. You can, if you look on the Google reviews, you go to Google, type in Studio Web, you find a guy, I think he posted it there, he said that he did Studio Web, no other background. It's a couple months of Studio Web training, and he beat people with computer science degrees and got the job. So that's kind of cool. Uh, hi, Steph. How can I expand my eBay business? Put more products on there. Uh, do you think basic front-end development for, like, brochure websites will be completely done with editors such as Webflow, Squarespace in the future instead of hand-coding? No, I do not think so. you got to look at those editors as tools that you could leverage. I remember the same exact fears were coming out when um, uh, WordPress came out. When WordPress came out, people were all worried worried that uh, that would replace web design, everybody's just gonna use WordPress, and now you have this huge industry, WordPress industry, where you got WordPress professionals, so I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Uh, hey, Steph, how do you feel about the Ruby tag in HTML? No go? <laughs> Well, if you if if you wanted to, if if you had too much traffic on your website and people were loading the pages too fast, I would implement the Ruby tag, but which would put a uh, it would slow down the page loads. It would slow down the page loads, so this way your servers wouldn't be so tasked, you know, because the page loads would be slowing down quite a bit. That's how I'd use the Ruby tag. Uh, which programming language, well, let me just get this. Which programming language should I start learning to get into coding? Uh, do Python. Check below, links below. Check out my Python course. Um, you'll learn pretty quickly with that. I am fairly certain. So there you go. All right, I'm just trying to get the right color match here. There we go. That looks pretty good. Got to keep the, uh, the video quality happening here. Ah, okay, I'll answer, answer a few more questions, then I got to go. I got a meeting. We have a lot... Excuse me, we have a lot learn as CS students. Do you think I need to take my time in choosing the path I want, or should I settle on one thing from the beginning? Now you're gonna you can you can maneuver like this, right? You can maneuver like this. And in your coding career, likely this you will switch from one stack to another, one language to another. But when you become um, an experienced professional developer, you'll stop thinking like a nerdling where you figure, um, I only do this. I only do Python. I only do Java. I only do Java, etc. You, when you become more advanced, you start thinking, "I'm just a coder," just like a great musician. A great musician, uh, they may have their primary uh, instrument, guitar or keyboards, whatever. But you find all the big, all the big professional musicians, they all play many instruments. Um, so that's you know. So yeah, you got to think that way. You got to think that way, but you can. As you become more advanced as a developer, you can pivot from one language to the van to next and so on. But uh, yeah, so don't worry about it. Don't stress it out. Don't stress it out. You'll be fine, you know. Uh, should I learn React or, or precise my knowledge in PHP? Well, if, uh, write, write projects. Get paid to learn. And if a you see there's React jobs in the horizon, then learn React at that moment in time. Okay. Uh, uh, frameworks are getting to the point where you don't need to know coding to do your job. I, maybe for simple stuff, but generally speaking, I would disagree. Laravel is my happy place. <laughs> it works. It works. How do you get over imposter syndrome when joining a new company? Ah, don't worry about it. Just, just write code, answer questions. If you got a bone up on a particular tech because you're weak, just learn it. Don't worry, it will come, it will come. Uh, it's normal, when you get into any new environment, uh, it's new, so you're gonna, you're gonna have to learn. But one of the key um, skills of a professional is to be able to adapt 
and move with the requirement of their work. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Python for a scientific simulation, I believe it is used there. I am not in that space though, but I believe it is used there. Uh, Salah says, how are you? I'm very good, I'm very good. Thanks for asking, I hope everything is good with you. Uh, that punch almost removed my head from my shoulders. Okay, <laughs> so to end this video, let's see if I can just do something here. So to end this video, People don't know, before I, was a, a, um, before I was a coder, I was a martial artist. Did it for 30 years, just about. And my last, I don't know, five years or so, I was pretty much just doing boxing. So I'm going to teach you guys how to throw a hook. I'm going to teach you an uppercut. Most people, they go like this. You see, they go like this. It's a big mistake because that leaves your face open. They drop their hand. They leave their face open. So when you throw an uppercut, you just go like this. You're lowering your body to get under a person. Same thing with the hook. A lot of people will go like this. Big mistake, new mistake, because you're leaving your face open to get punched. So when you throw a hook, you're always protecting. See, look look at my fist. Never lose my cheek. And you use your body position, boom, to throw that hook. There you go. Now uh, you know how to take care of business if uh, you got problems. Don't get into fights, not worth it, trust me. All right, that's it. I hope you like the boxing lessons. Uh, Peachy, is 50 too, too, too old to learn, is 50 years old too old to learn coding? No, I have friends who are in their mid-50s who are actually coding still, so you're fine. All right, that's about it. I appreciate you dropping on the stream. If you do like it, please give me some thumbs up. Uh, my recommended books are uh, down in the links below. If you know your foundations, you've done a couple little projects, if you want to up your game, it's time to take off the the tutorial baby training wheels, no more tutorials, and you want to get the book on refactoring, it's down below, refactoring, that will up your game, boom, like this. And uh, there's another book on there, on there, it's on um, design patterns. So if you are comfortable writing code, you know your way, you can write objects and functions and methods, and you can write a little program, and you can do a little web app or something. Now you're ready to start refactoring, and design patterns. No more tutorials. Your, your past tutorials, you're done with that. You gotta get rid of the baby wheels. You do that, your game will up, like within, within a week or two, your game's gonna go like this. You're gonna be like GameStop, but it never crashes. It just keeps going higher. It never stops. So that's what I recommend, links below. If you're a total noob to coding, you should take my studio web course because uh, though I am very biased, I think it's the one to go with. Or you can do my book, which is on Amazon. You can click through, check out the reviews. You see it's very highly reviewed. Um, so that's if you're a total beginner. And uh, there you go. Thanks for joining. And uh, like I said, if you like the stream, please give me some thumbs up, share it with people, and um, all that good stuff. And that's it. All right, I'll leave you with my ASMR uh, main video. Cape Elizabeth, Maine, which is uh, northeastern USA. One of the most beautiful places you can go. And I took this video last year, I think it is. But because I'm 169 years old, it was probably 25 years ago. But I think it was last year, in my mind at least. All right, I'll talk soon.